Hey everyone, and welcome back to Potato Monsters League of Legends Top 5 Plays for an episode stacked with all sorts of outplay. I'm excited to get going with this lineup, so let's begin with iFame's Eye on Amumu with a crazy close call number 5 play. In the beginning, we see him quickly grabbing the tier 2, but he takes quite a bit of damage from Thresh and starts to get low. The box plus Ignite is enough to make him ult, and thanks to a bunch of minions helping him out, and then another Q, things are evened up. With the final E, Thresh goes down as Mumu goes to clear the wave and then recall back to base, but this greedy play puts him right back in trouble. His only option is to banish Toss the Gromp, but Graves blocks the escape path, so he's forced to flash over and then quickly smite Grom for the health to survive the damage from Graves. He sits in the brush for a while, waiting for his Q to come back up, stunning him when he enters, and then Amumu takes off, just barely surviving the Q. After hugging the wall, he's forced to keep running upwards to keep distance as he gets down super low and breaks line of sight. With quick thinking, he smites again for the health, going back in with a final banish toss for the second kill, thanks to the double smite and the gromp buff to slowly kill Graves. The outplay continues with their next play from Strive like 543 on Oriana with a clutch move under the tower. This play starts off looking not so hot as they dive Oriana, but the enemy support and jungler can't quite stack the damage, so Zack backs off. Grom knows he can't solo kill her, so he has to walk away for now, but with the tower on their creeps, they can fully surround her. She shields and ults herself to hit all three, getting the instant double kill before flashing away from Zack to let the tower do the work. Oriana walks away from that dive with a triple kill, all thanks to the beautifully timed shockwave to pull them in, so let's check that out again before we move on. Landing in at her number 3 spot is Project Ryo on Thresh with a nasty string of hooks that all happen in a row. Both teams are grouped mid, but the enemy Renekton is still top and he has no teleport, so blue team is looking for the right engage to all in. MF goes for the creep and Thresh reads her with a Q over the wall, finding a crucial free kill for his team as they quickly start to charge down mid. After taking the tower, they continue forward as we see Thresh eager to hook, finding it on the other AD carry with a mad life pull to deliver yet another free kill to his team. As he gets out, Sejuani he helps him with an ult as he tries to turn and get more kills, somehow threading the needle to land a godly Q past three creeps to find his mark and go three for three on hooks and enemies slain. Coming in at second place is Bobson with an excellent team fight play on his ear when things are looking bad at the start. He's recalling after pushing mid with his team when all of a sudden the enemy Volibear flashes over the wall and flings him back. Azir's in a bad spot so he's on the flash shell from Cast as well as the flash dazzle from Tarek. When he gets out he shoves the enemy team back away from his team so they can isolate Cassiopeia while the other four players have to sit back and watch. Asher's arrow slows most of them and then Azir lands a crippling four man slow to follow it up allowing for the full blown counter engage on the retreating blue team. One by one they go down giving a triple to Azir, double the Cho'Gath, and then the win for Red Team after an extremely well-played team fight that didn't look promising at the start. And for number one pro play for this week, we have Rave on Nar with a picture perfect wombo when his team needs it most. The score is 19 to 8, and they're at a 9,000 gold deficit with the inhib already down in mid. Nar's building a rage when his team decides to engage 4v5, and he's turning mega soon, so he looks to flank. From out of nowhere, he jumps over, throwing them into the wall, followed by wall up to hold him in place for Jinx the Rocket and clean up all five for the ace. By the time that fight broke out, it was a 3v5 and despite being so far behind in every aspect of the game, Nar's timing and angle of attack turns this fight 180 and gives his team hope. And for the bonus clip of the week, we have Roro Noah on Braum, who's looking to quickly roam to mid for a gank, but things work out much better than expected. We see him moving up through river, but as he comes up the dragon, he spots Lee Sin soloing it and decides to contest it. Lee is smite, so Braum is much more interested in killing him over stealing dragon, but why not both? As you face palm and watch the rest of this play, I wanted to give a special thanks to our sponsor, Skillcapped, who provides the cash prize to our number one plays. Last time we shouted them out, I told everyone about their brand new coaching option available to members of the site. I wanted to follow up and show that more and more of their coaching reviews are being posted for all the members to watch and they're covering different levels of games. As you can see, there are games from bronze, silver, gold, and even plat, and in my opinion, games that you can relate to, you can learn more from than watching a higher level of game than you're used to. You can preview the first two minutes to any of these videos for free, so check out the link in the description box if you're interested. Thanks for watching everyone, have a wonderful day and good luck out there on the Rift.